G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a tutorial on the channel uh, dealing with how to create sun eye views in Revit using Dynamo and the Crumple custom package, which I developed myself. So we're gonna be creating views today uh, very easily using my custom package, uh, which create views from the position of the sun as if you were viewing from the sun. And the useful thing about these views is they give you a very quick understanding of which locations of your building are going to be in shadow because effectively everything you can't see is in shadow because you are effectively the sun. Now, of course, the sun technically projects sun not directly straight, but we're so far away from the sun that it's as good as straight. Um, so you can almost look at it as an axonometric view. Now these can be quite difficult to set up naturally in Revit. Whilst you can set up sun settings, there is no tool that naturally puts you in the position of the sun in a view. Now of course there is the ladybug package historically which gave us access to sun vectors and also had a sun eye view tool within its nodes. And of course we can use Rhino inside as well to access nodes that still are capable of doing this. Uh, but unfortunately for most people that's usually a few steps too far. As well as this, um, I do like to support things Revit native when I can, and in this case the solution will be entirely within Dynamo. For those that aren't aware, Ladybug for Dynamo is generally unsupported beyond Revit 2020. Um, that was a choice of the developers, uh, but since then I've been looking at ways we can achieve similar things to what they did in Dynamo natively. So we're going to be taking a few steps today. First of all, I'll be creating what we call in Ladybug historically an analysis period or a range of dates and times that we would like to create these views at. From there, we'll be getting the direction or the position of the sun so we can orientate ourselves towards it. And then from there, we'll be creating the sun I views themselves. And finally, we'll be setting the time of day for those views just so they have a good record of the time of day they represented, not only in their view name, but also in their sun settings. This is a good way to verify that the workflow has also worked because ideally we should see no shadows when we set ourselves to that time of day. So I'll be using Revit 2022 today and the inbuilt Dynamo build, and I'll be using a lot of my custom package crumple. You will want to use the latest version as of the release of this video, because I did add most of these nodes quite recently to it, and I released a new version about a week ago. As well as this, um, if you are in 2023 or higher, uh, you will need to install the Iron Python 2.7 package. I do use the Iron Python programming language by choice, at least for now. You also will need to install the 2.5 version because typically that's the last one that is compatible with most Revit builds below 2025 to my understanding. Anyway, um, as always, it will help if you have some Revit understanding. In this case, we won't be using a lot of Python, but you can technically look in my notes and find the Python code that is doing most of what we're doing today. Um, but it's up to you uh, how deeply you need to understand this. So without further ado, we'll dive in. Um, if I'm talking too fast, feel free to slow down the video playback speed, uh, but it's a fairly simple tutorial today. So I'm just gonna jump into a Revit classic model that we know and don't really love. Uh, but in this case, if I was gonna try and put myself into the position of the sun, it would be quite difficult. Let's say for example, um, I'm going to be in Boston. Uh, maybe let's put myself somewhere a bit more relevant to me. Let's say that this project is actually in Sydney, Australia, or Adelaide, Australia. So you will want to make sure you do put yourself in uh, the right location first. This will be very relevant to the direction of the sun. This is making for some good viewing. Oh, come on, Autodesk, do your thing. Really doesn't want to find where I live. One more try. There we go. So now I'm in the southern hemisphere, so I should expect to see the sun actually being orientated the other way around. Um, in this case, let's put myself in uh, the uh, winter, winter solstice, when the sun will be at its lowest, around midday. And for now, I'll just turn off my ground plane. I'll go to hidden line, turn on shadows, and we can see that we're roughly orientated over here. And I can very roughly try to put myself in a position where I can't see shadow. That's probably roughly in the position of the nine o'clock vector uh, for that time of day, but it's not very approximate. And if I wanted to create lots of these views in a row, it would take a lot of time for me to set these up individually. Um, so in this case, let's look at how we can automate that. 
It's worth noting that if I turn on in the site category, my internal origin project base point survey point, you will want to make sure that you have set the angle to true north in your project. If project north isn't set to true north by default, because my tools also read this angle and use them to orientate the position of the sun. So I'm just going to boot up Dynamo and we'll just start setting up some custom nodes from the crumple package to support this workflow. So to begin with, we need to construct some date times. So in crumple data date time, I'm going to be creating an analysis period and I'm eventually also going to want to create some sun directions. So we're just going to take these two nodes for now. And to begin with, I'm just going to start building some integer sliders. And the reason I use these is because they're really good for Dynamo Player. So if I make them an input, I can now pick my year. Um, in this case, it makes, you know, not really much sense to do anything but the minimum of the year we're in. Let's say I want to run this tool all the way up till 2030. Um, God hopes we don't, we don't have to. <laughs> but anyway, there's a year. Uh, from there, we need a month. And in this case, of course, 1 to 12 makes sense. By default, I'm going to set it to the winter solstice. Uh, typically, you're going to be doing a single day as well. So we go from 1 up to 31. Uh, important to remember that not every month will have 31 days. So you sort of depend on the user to pick a logical day uh, as correlates to the month. Of course, after that, we need the start time. So we're going to do start time. And in this case, this will be between 1 and 23. Um, actually, sorry, technically 0 and 23. Um, and by default, I usually set this to 9 because a, a standard testing period in Australia is generally 9 until 3 o'clock. That's when we get most of our sunlight during the day. Now, the last input's a little bit more complicated. It's called the time step. So do I want to do every hour, every half hour, every quarter? In this case, you want to enter the number that you divide the hour by. So if I do one, I'll get every hour. If I do three, I'll get every 20 minutes. If I do every four, I'll get every 15 minutes. If I do 60, I'll get every minute. So in this case, I'm just going to hook these inputs up and then we'll have a look at what comes out the other end. So by default, we can see that nothing is going to come out. So I do need to provide a time step in this case. Um, I'm just going to make this a number input instead, uh, just so it's up to the user exactly what they want this thing to be. And let's by default just set it to one. And I can see that now this generates date times and also view name prefixes uh, for every hour. If I go to two, I can see I get every half hour, three, 20 minutes, four, every 15, and it will always go up to the last hour on the hour. So it does do a full complete interval test, including the last interval. Let's just stick with one for now, just to keep things neat. I'm also just gonna create a view name for these. So I do have what's a human friendly view naming convention here, which will stack in a good order, year, month, day, time, with good characters for Revit. That's intentionally built that way. Let's just say in this case, this is my view prefix. A good prefix would probably be view from sun underscore slash dash, whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to add that to the view name. So we should now have, uh, whoops, other way around. Let's do a prefix. We now have a pretty good view naming convention for our model. So I might actually just put this up here. Well, maybe not, we'll, we'll do it like this. Now from this, I can generate date times. Now to actually get the sun direction, behind the scenes, this is actually gonna do some work that you won't see. It's gonna go and create a temporary view. It's gonna set the sun settings and ask that sun setting for its direction. So you're not typically gonna to wanna to run this in automatic mode, and you're probably only gonna to want to run it when you need to. So for now, I'm gonna to switch to manual mode, but we are gonna connect these date times to ask for their sun direction in the model. Now we actually need to create the sun eye views. So under Revit in Crumple, under views, we're gonna be looking for sun, uh, sun view or sun eye view. Uh, where is it? So we actually do need this one as well. Um, but I need the view from sun, there we go. So we need sun directions, view names, and a view type, so a 3D view type. So I'm gonna provide my sun directions as vectors, my view names I wanna create, and then of course I also need a view type. So Crumple also has a view family type node, which will either retrieve a 3D name with a given name, and if it can't or it isn't given an input, it will just return the first view type of that, of that type. So we'll just get our default 3D view type using this node by not providing a name. The last thing we wanna do is take our views from Sun. 
and actually apply the date time that was used originally as the date time for the sun setting applied to the view. So this will actually apply the same uh, same uh, date time in the sun settings of the view that gets created. And that's pretty much it. So I'm just gonna save this and then we'll run it and just have a look at the outcome. I'm just gonna call this view from sun. And I'm just gonna probably put a watch on the back as well, just so we can see what happens. And say views created. And there we go. So if I just uh, put this off to the side and I hit run, we can see we've just generated these 3D views. And in this case, uh, they're going to be positioned a little bit differently by the looks of it. I'll just double check by turning on shadows that this actually did, did in fact work. Looks like it's worked. We can see the shadows are currently not, not being applied. So, so we can see my original view from sun assumption was probably actually incorrect. I actually probably made a mistake with the sun setting uh, originally, but we can see if I leave this orientation, well, there's my shadows. So they're definitely there. And we are definitely, definitely looking at a true view from sun in this case. So in this case, I can also just cross check that my sun setting has in fact been applied correctly. Still Adelaide, mid June, three o'clock for this particular view. Looks correct to me. So in this case, we can see we've successfully created views orientated to the position of the sun. Um, we can always confirm this too by just activating the sun path, um, which I believe is here, just to get an idea that we are pretty much looking through the sun at that point. We'll just check one or two more, just to be sure. Looks pretty good there as well. Again, looks like we're fairly consistently looking towards the model. There we go, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And we can see we're getting a pretty good outcome in terms of trying to orientate ourselves towards the position of the sun. One thing to note is in this case, if you do rerun the script, it's not gonna recreate any views that already exist by name. So if you do wanna rerun this, it's good to usually delete the views that were there originally and then rerun the script. So let's say I wanna run this through Dynamo Player just to finish off the workflow. And maybe we'll run this on a different time period as well. So I'm gonna edit the inputs of the script. In this case, uh, let's say that we want to go on the 21st, maybe we just wanna go from nine to 11 with a time step of four instead. So if I hit run, we should get quarterly hours sun tests between nine and 11. And sure enough, we can see we've got nine, 9.15, 9.30. And we can see that we're able to create those incremental sun positions. And of course, again, if we unlock the view, we can confirm that we do in fact sit at the position of the sun. So there we go, um, quite a useful workflow and I hope that Crumple helps people achieve this workflow more naturally, um, whilst also giving you some Python code to look at, uh, to learn from. Anyway, this script and a lot of my resources, including the work in progress version of Crumple can be found over on my GitHub, so feel free to check it out. Um, of course, as always, thank you for watching. Um, you can contact me via email or leave comments down below and do give me some video requests. I do have a little bit of a backlog built up that I am working on, uh, but in the meantime, hopefully some of these Crumple tutorials and Dynamo tutorials have been interesting nonetheless. I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.